I'm Sithrith. I'm Draculetta. I'm Mithelros. And you're listening to Radio Free Tyria, the Guild Wars 2 podcast for the casual crowd. So this week, this episode, we are currently five days away from the first Guild Wars 2 expansion, which is pretty exciting stuff. That's pretty exciting. I'm pretty excited. Um, five days is crazy, um, and ArenaNet's been posting a whole bunch of stuff, getting ready for Heart of Thorns, so uh, for this podcast episode, we're going to kind of go over recent news that they've put out, because, you know, they're always putting out new stuff while we're waiting for the expansion to drop. And also, we're going to talk a bit about, just kind of recap all the stuff that we're going to be seeing come Friday. October 23rd is a Friday, right? I can never... Yeah, it's a Friday. Yes, Friday. With with New Zealand time zone weirdness, it's kind of like, I don't actually know what, what day slash time the expansion's going to hit for me. I think it's going to happen, like, Friday afternoon-ish? Because it's supposed to... They put out a blog post that says, uh, Heart of Thorns is going to drop 12.01 a.m. October 23rd. They're going to be live streaming a champagne toast when they press the button to launch it. So that's a thing. What? That's, that's, I um... mean, they're excited. It's their first Guild Wars 2 expansion. I can understand it. But 12, 12, I mean, I guess, yeah, if you're going to drink champagne, midnight's probably a good time. Maybe. I don't know. Didn't realize there was a button. Uh, yeah, well, that's the other thing. I assume that they, like, crafted a button just specifically for this. Just, you know. Kind of make it a little more embarrassing. I would assume breaks. the button is more like an enter button. <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> like they just hit a button on a keyboard to actually tell it to go live to the servers. Yeah, it's but they might have been the button like isn't large and red. I'm not going to be satisfied. Or green you know, they, because thorns. They should just go to like <laughs> Staples and get one of those big easy buttons. Yeah, although and I just d- slap the easy button and there you go. There you go. I'm sure it won't be super easy, though. Maybe. Not that I'm saying, you know, Heart of Thorns is going to be easy. I'm just... You know, right, right, right. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a big red button, so yeah. yeah. And just paint, paint it green, like you said, and just write hot on it, and there you have it. <laughs> There's your button you can hit. <laughs> yep. Guild Wars 2 is now hot. Get it? I made a joke. Okay, that was a really bad joke. Moving on. So five days to go. We are in the calm before the thorns... Uh, <laughs> two in a row. That's just. Uh, <laughs> I'm so really? proud of myself. Really, I'm so proud of myself. You're really proud of that. <laughs> I really am. I'm really bad at puns, and so when I can think of we them, we can I'm tell. Really no, no, I noticed that. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so yeah, my my terrible puns about the expansion aside. Uh, five days ago, and they're still announcing new stuff and giving us more details. Obviously, it's kind of like. It's, it almost feels like at this point, it's like, oh my gosh, what's the point? Because I know I'm just going to get my hands on it soon anyway, but whatever. So uh, they've been doing a lot of their live streams this week in preparation, which makes sense. Uh, you know, got to keep that hype train going till the 23rd. They've been posting articles. So one big thing that is coming with Heart of Thorns is obviously we're going to get a whole bunch of maps for, you know, PvE content. Mm-hmm. And that's really fun. Uh, we I don't think we still know quite exactly how many maps we're getting. Uh, I think the uh, current speculation is still around like three or four maps with multiple levels. Seems each. like something they should have mentioned by now. I think they might have mentioned it at some point, and I've missed it because, like I said, there's been such a deluge of information the past few weeks. Yeah, it's kind it, of hard to keep on top of it you'd all. I think that would be a significant piece that wouldn't have got a lot of. Yeah, mention. that's true. So yeah, I'm not still not 100% sure how many zones there are. Um, but we do know that each zone has, you know, at most three separate levels to it. Um, but I think I think they said the lowest was two levels per map. So that's... That's vertical levels. Yes, right. vertical levels within each uh, geographic map. I was going to say horizontal map, but yeah, I guess, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's a thing. We're also going to be getting masteries, of course, and... 
There's two different types of masteries. There's the central tyria or pact tyria masteries, um, and those you can earn by getting gaining XP in main, like the current kind of Guild Wars 2 zones we have now, aka central tyria. We there's also going to be the new Heart of Maguma masteries. So this is going to be the super exciting gliding, which of course everybody's looking forward mm-hmm. to. Um, learning about the different uh, races that we're encountering in Heart of Thorns, so the different new ver- variations of Hylic, like the New Hawk and the Itzel, um, and learning how to jump on mushrooms and stuff. So those are the masteries. Um, also, just recently this week, specifically yesterday, actually, they on one of their streams they announced a new set of targeting system options that's going to be coming out with Heart of Thorns, apparently this one developer has taken this on as his like pet project, and he's been really working hard to get this uh, action-oriented combat targeting system set up. Uh, we talked about this before we went live a bit, uh, but the three of us don't fully understand it, um, and it's kind of hard to explain. I'm going to link the video of the live stream in the chat, or not the chat, show notes, because it's kind of hard to explain. You kind of have to see it in use to understand it. Basically, um, some people really enjoy action-oriented combat, and they they cite Skyrim as an example of this action-oriented combat. And basically, it's going to set up so that there's a like little white dot, a reticle, in the middle of your screen, and whenever you move it around, like you know, you move your camera around to face enemies, whenever you come across an enemy you can attack, it turns red, and so you then get these options of whether you want it to then lock onto your target so that you are, you know, always focused on attacking the target, or you can leave it so that there is no lock-on mode, so it's more like when you play Skyrim and you kind of just swing and you have to make sure you're always facing your opponent, otherwise it'll just kind of attack the air. So apparently people really enjoy this type of combat system. I don't see the appeal, personally, but apparently this is something that a lot of people really, really enjoy because people are very, very excited about this. Um, what do you guys think? Are you excited for a action combat mode, or no? Um, it's, like, it's kind of hard because I don't know exactly how it's going to work mm-hmm. or how it's going to feel. I mean, I, I will try it. Right. I'm going to try it out. I kind of playing Skyrim, the combat was never really a huge part of the appeal for me. It was there, but it wasn't like, yeah, I love Skyrim's combat. So, you know, I'll try it. If I like it, I'll like it. If I don't, I know. Yeah. I do like developers having their own pet projects, though. Oh, yeah. Big it's always nice when, they, um, when they're able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I love when developers like work really hard on pet projects because it 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 proves that they do really care about the game. They're not just like, oh well, this is a paycheck. I'm just kind of checking in and checking out and doing what I have to do. Like this, this developer really loves the game mm-hmm. and wants to improve it. So that's pretty cool. What about you, Drac? You excited for action-oriented combat? Like Etheros, I really don't know because I don't quite understand it. So I will try it, mm-hmm. and maybe I'll like it and I'll use it all the time. But if not, I like, and kind of like I thought it was too, I was never that big into the Skyrim type combat, and that's really what this seems like to me. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll just see. But yeah. it is cool that, you know, they're like still adding changes to combat and stuff after all this time. And, you know, and then find out that it was just like one developer doing it just as, you know, his little project. So that makes it even cooler. So Yeah. Yeah, I think for people who are really into immersion in their games, it might be really good. Um, personally, I don't like, I don't know, combat for me isn't su- something I'm super concerned about immersion with. But yeah, it should be interesting. Um, I definitely will give it a try as well, and, and we'll see how it goes. And like I said, I'll link the video of the stream, because I think that will do a better job of explaining it than kind of trying to explain it with words. Yeah, I think that's the problem the um, article had. It's really hard to sort of explain how this works without being able to just show it. Right. Because it's like, yeah, you get a reticle and, and stuff. And and stuff, right. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird. So we'll we'll post the video and you'll see. 
So also with Heart of Thorns, of course, we've been talking about quite a bit on the past few episodes are the elite specializations that we'll be getting. So if you have a character at level 80, you'll be able to, and if you own Heart of Thorns, you'll be able to trade into a elite specialization. And those are pretty cool. Um, obviously, everybody has different opinions about which ones are better than others. Um, but it's definitely interesting, and I definitely recommend at least giving them a shot, uh, whatever your profession is, because you never know if you'll end up liking it or not. There's also going to be a whole bunch of changes to PvP, and again, they've they've announced some more stuff this week. Uh, but of course, just to recap first, there's going to be leagues for PvP um, that will kind of have seasons, and they'll be doing balance changes before each season starts, and so every season, you will kind of work your way up the leagues and you know, gain ranks and stuff, and then it, when the season ends, you'll everybody restarts from the beginning and again. There's also going to be some new PvP reward tracks. Uh, they have come out with that in the past few weeks, and basically this is going to give you opportunities to unlock the missed champions that you can use in the Stronghold uh, gameplay mode. So that's good, because I think a lot of people were concerned that the only way to earn missed champions was to buy them. Or by Heart of Thorns. Mm. But with the reward tracks, you can just kind of unlock them by playing PvP regularly. So that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I um, guess not having as many transmutation tokens isn't cool, though. Yeah, they are They are having... Uh, half... Half... Halfing. Halfing. <laughs> what, how many uh, transmutation charges that you'll be able to earn from... Reward tracks, which makes my heart hurt because I go through transmutation charges like candy. But I'm Hashtag sure. Hashtag eighty-seven. Uh, shut up. <sighs> I have six right now. I'm really proud of myself. I haven't spent any in a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, they're also going to be coming out with a new dragon finisher, which is the rank eighty uh, PVP rank finisher. Some people have complained that it's too big. Um, they might have tweaked it since since that feedback. I don't know. We'll see. But the big, big PvP announcement that they came out with this week is that Guild Wars 2 is uh, going to be introducing a official ESL um, esports league, Pro League, for Guild Wars 2. So this is like a big deal for the esports, I guess. Um, because, you know, other other big esports have pro leagues, like League of Legends does. I'm pretty sure Dota 2 does, you know, big the big games you think of when you think of CSGO esports. CSGO does as well. I yeah, yeah, CSGO definitely does. Um, I assume there's RTS games that also have it, like StarCraft. Um, yeah, when you think esports, this, you know, esports games have these kind of pro leagues. And Guild Wars 2 now will also, which I guess makes sense. They've been really pushing for PvP to become, you know, a bigger deal in the Guild Wars 2 population. Although, like we talked about last time, I think, or two episodes ago, I don't even remember now, uh, Colin Johansson did say that there are more people playing PvP now than there ever even was during Guild Wars 1. And Guild Wars 1 was pretty well known for its PvP population. So I think that definitely is pretty telling about why they would go through with this Pro League. And... It's also pretty interesting because uh, they said in the ESL Guild Wars 2 Pro League, eight teams from each region will compete for a combined prize pool of 400,000 US dollars. So that's a lot of money. I mean, obviously that's you know distributed amongst the regions and winners, but still, that's a lot of prize money. So that's <laughs> interesting. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the changes that are coming for PvP, especially the PvP leagues. Um, especially Stronghold and South. Especially Stronghold. I'm looking forward very much to Stronghold. And I'm I'm really looking forward to Leagues, because I think it'll... I've been kind of logging in and doing PvP dailies, and that's about it lately. And I feel like with Leagues, I'll have kind of more of a reason to try and play more often and, you know, improve myself, which is, you know, good. Mm. Yeah. So, also with Heart of Thorns, we're going to be getting a new World v. World Borderlands map. I don't really World v. World, and I know you guys don't either. Uh, but but it's a thing. Um, I'll probably like run in there once or twice to take a look around, because from the screenshots I've seen of the new Borderlands map, it looks really cool. See if they have any jumping puzzles there. We'll they do not do have any if... jumping puzzles. Oh, They sad. have said that they do not. So, if you want to get the jumping puzzles, like the current achievement for jumping puzzles, go do... The go into World v. World now, 
on the Alpine map and do the jumping puzzles because they will be going away. The Alpine Borderlands World v. World map is going to be, you know, on hiatus, retired for however long a time, and is going to be replaced by the new Desert Borderlands map, which does not have a jumping puzzle. So if you really want that jumping puzzle, go go do it. That seems kind of odd to me. That they got rid of the jumping repla- puzzle? To replace the old map. Well, I, okay. I, I guess they want to make sure you don't have like a minimum population in either one. They want right. to kind of get as many people in one as they can. But yeah. it still seems odd to kind of retire a whole map. I mean, they they didn't say that it's going to like be going away forever. Like they said that they might rotate it between the Desert Borderlands map occasionally to kind of switch things yeah. up. I so, can see that. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm. Got to keep things fresh. But um, yeah, so that's the World v. World thing. There's also going to be the Guild. Uh, ob- 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 obje- uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not object, know. but it's close to object. Objective. Objectives. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> objective was the word I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, guild object, objective capturing. <laughs> I can't even say it still. Uh, I'm garbage. Okay, so that's a thing. Moving on before I can't say words about that anymore. There's also going to be some new legendaries with Heart of Thorns, and this is something that they announced this week, and they showed these new legendaries on a stream this week. They're Instead of kind of releasing all of these new legendaries all at once like they did with the start of the game, they're going to be releasing them in small batches like as they finish them. So right now they have an axe, a staff, and a... They, at first I thought it was a rifle, but I guess it's a pistol. Yeah, it's a pistol. Um, these three legendaries, they also released the names of them, but now I'm struggling to find them. I don't... I can't find them. But, okay, so the axe looks really cool. It's got this kind of celestial... Clockwork sort of stuff. Yeah, there's, like, clockworky stuff, and then also this, like, glowing celestial blue space stuff. Like, think druid celestial form, or that space-looking glowy stuff on the outside of the Black Lion training post building in Lion's Arch. Yeah. So that's all over the axe itself, and then when you're... When your character's holding it in their hand, like when it's equipped, their arm also turns blue and galaxy stardust looking. So that's pretty cool. Um, mm. Too bad I don't have any characters that are blue themed that wield axes. Pistol looks kind of eh. Like I mean, it's eh. it's it's not bad. It's just I think it's. I don't good. know what theme it's trying to have. Uh, I guess the theme is energy or something. I don't know. It's but be- like the currently the only legendary pistol right now is Quip, which is kind of like a one of those quote unquote joke legendaries because it's got like a pig face and it shoots confetti. Oh, uh, yeah. so it's good to have more of a quote unquote realistic. Re- I guess uh, one pistol. that's yeah. I hesitate yeah, to I say realistic because it's got it's got all these like different scopes and sights on it and stuff, and it looks really cool and it's all very steampunky. And then it's also got all this electricity around it. Kind of like Bolt, but not quite as much. Like Bolt the Sword. It's a more generalist pistol than something more niche. Yeah. And so this... I see a lot of different characters using it. Yeah. This this also has an arm effect, like the axe does. It makes your arm kind of... Uh, you know when a Mesmer uses mass invisibility and you turn... You go stealth, but you have kind of like a pinky kind of border around you, sort of? Your arm looks like that and is also full of lightning. So that's kind of weird. Sure, that's healthy. Yeah. It's probably not harmful at all, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. No. Then the staff's just a stick with a bird on it. Well, the staff is great for um, Norn characters because it it is, as Athelro says, a stick with a bird on it. It's a stick with a raven on it, specifically some little blue glowing lights and some runes carved into it. And when you are wielding it, it, like, has this big, like, wind effect through it. And you can see the, like, blue spirit of Raven sitting in the branches of the staff. So that's really cool for Norm- Norn characters. Um, so if you have, like, a Norn caster character of some kind, that's probably something to think about saving up for and getting. Although, getting legendaries in Heart of Thorns is going to be easier because we're going to be able to craft precursors with the new legendary crafting mastery line. So that is a thing. Aren't you happy? I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not. I'm, I mean, 
I'm hoping, I'm still not 100% sure how it's going to work, because like, I already have all these other materials for the legendary. I don't know if I'll just be able to craft the precursor and then that's it. I hope so. Because oh. then, yeah, then I'll have Twilight. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Arguably the, the most uh, important or hyped thing coming with Heart of Thorns is the continuation of personal story uh, slash living story slash, you know, whatever it is that we're up to at this story. point. Story. The story. story. Just the story. Whatever, whether it's living or personal or, or personally living I would story. I it's both. It's your living while you're doing it. It's personal because it's your character, but maybe that's... That's true. Yeah. So the story is continuing on, and that's pretty exciting. Uh, um, they also recently gave us a bit more information about something in the story that we didn't really know anything about until they announced it, basically. And it's this thing called, or these things, I guess, called the Exalted. And if you've watched the trailers, there's these kind of glowing beings, like, that are all gold and stuff. And I know Drac and I assumed it was Mersat, like, kind of with a visual revamp. But apparently they're not Mersat. There's something called the Exalted that Glint created. And they've basically been running this city in the Maguma jungle, just kind of chilling. Wait until they're supposed to do something. And now they're all waking up. And apparently their first thing they see when they wake up is the packed fleet crashing. So we're going to be meeting these guys. And uh, hopefully they're going to help us kill Mordremoth or something. I don't know. It's kind of... It's, it kind of came out of left field. And I'd be interested to hear what you think, Drac, about these exalted things. Because I feel like it's kind of just come out of nowhere. But I don't know the lore as much as you. Well, it, it, it did. And reading about them, they're very mersat like in their quali- qua- uh, qualities. Mm-hmm. But yet they're not. So I'm not sure what they're doing. And there's nothing really. They were not in the original Guild Wars whatsoever. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, Glint was, of course. Mm-hmm. But there was never about any race of sentient beings she created, so... And that's the other thing. They say in the article that it that they were created 300 years ago. Guild Wars 1 takes place 250 years ago. So, you know... Yeah, why they weren't they... they somewhere. Why weren't they in the original game? Right. I mean, so yeah, it's it, it's kind of weird. Or were they, and I mean, we just didn't know they I were. I guess they were undergoing these tests and trials at the time, mm-hmm. so we never really talked to them. Maybe. I suppose. Yeah, so Although, I'll be interested to see what they do with these, though. Yeah. Can't say I'm really swayed by that deal, to be honest. Like, getting a bunch of magic and some cool armor is nice, but I don't want to give up eating, sleeping, and my legs, to be honest. Yeah, that's the thing. These Exalted aren't just, like, something that she kind of conjured out of thin air. Basically, humans had to come and complete some trials and get turned into these magical energy beings. So, it's kind of weird. It's a little weird. And they're supposed to keep the memories from before. Yeah, so, so they're they not just like... So they around, probably. They're yeah. Most likely they have no idea where they are. Well, so it was really... 300 years ago, so they're probably dead. At this point, probably, yeah. Yeah. But, so, still. Yeah. But you have a glowing, floaty, magical thing going on for you, though. Yeah, that's true. You do have some cool, like, little weird, like, tendrils, mm. and you're all glowy and golden, and... And, you know, and you're pretty I mean, cool, I guess, I guess. I guess the bling is worth it. <laughs> is the bling worth it? I guess that'll be the first question we should ask when we get there. Because they, they are the ones that have been running this golden city that we've seen in the trailers and stuff. Everybody kind of assumed it was, like, just ancient human ruins. or Well, I guess technically it is ancient human ruins, because they are technically humans, whatever. But uh, Or Mersat ruins. But as it turns out, these don't really have anything to do with Mersat. Except for, like Drex said, you know, energy and mm. magic stuff. It's pretty Aztec inspired. Yeah, yeah. It, Which would make sense given it's sort of general ish and you Yeah. Know. And like that. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, so we'll we'll be running into the Exalted in Heart of Thorns at some point in the story. And of course, uh discovering the fate of Destiny's Edge and the Pact and Traherne, who I hope is not dead and or a Mordrum. We'll see. Oh, he's not dead yet. Ah, uh, drag. No, he won't die. We'll, we'll have, have to, to, kill to kill him. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guarantee you that's what's going to happen. It's, I, I it's will gonna state happen. it now. Guarantee we'll have to fight you. him at least. 
we're gonna have to put him down. That's well, we won't. We won't know next week because when we record next week, I think the game will or the expansion will only have been out for like twenty, a little over twenty four hours. So we probably won't get that far in the story. We'll Maybe. see. We'll see. I'm hoping you guys are wrong. I want you guys to be so wrong. I mean, I want to be wrong, but I don't think I, I don't am. think you do. I don't think you do. <laughs> um. So yeah, the story is going to be interesting. Do you guys have any other predictions about story stuff? Like, do you think any uh, like Destiny's Edge members are going to die besides Traherne? Some people speculate mm. that Air is dead. I don't. I don't think going to just straight kill anyone off screen. I think that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. They're too significant characters for them to just do it off screen with no sort of dr- drama or anything. Yeah. I'm expecting at least one of either Destiny's Edge or the other group to at least suffer some sort of injury, illness, or death, or possession, or whatever. Possession. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Someone and... needs to, at least, I think. Yeah, that's fair enough. What about you, Jack? Any Any death predictions? Better not be Zoja, that's all I'm saying. I bet it's Zoja. Uh, I hope it's Zoja. so ticked off. <laughs> oh, you're going to hear me rage if it is. I'm sure I will go will. on the most epic tirade you have ever heard. I'm I'm sure you will, Drac. I'm sure you will. <laughs> so it better not be. But no, I actually don't think anybody's going to die. Except I for they might. Yeah, uh, well, of course. They might be, you know, kind of injured badly due to the whole crash and everything. And I'm thinking maybe part of the story is going to be we're having to help them, you know, get their their health back. Okay. And to be back, and then, you know, they'll end up helping us in the turn fight, which is going to come at the end. Oh, you think so? You oh, think yeah. he's going to be the, the, the last boss of the expansion? Yep. He'll be Mordremoth's champion. Yep. Stop. Stop. <laughs> yep. When you think about he, it, he's one of the most powerful uh... Savari there is. He was Arguably just a the, agent the whole time. Uh, and he had a great sword just... before everyone else did. He had a great sword before everyone else did, so clearly. Ugh, no. But okay, so... Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and what are you going to do if our prediction actually comes true? I'm going to cry. I almost cried at... Uh, I almost said Ghost Island. I don't know where that came from. Claw Island. Um... <laughs> During the Order of Whispers thing, when Tybalt dies. I almost cried then. If I have to kill Traherne, I'll cry. You have to put him down like a rabbit dog. Right. It's like <sighs> old Yeller, just take him out back and you guys are chew the in the brain fan and it's done. You guys are the worst. Um, it'll be interesting to play through the expansion as a Silvari. Yeah, I'm actually going to do that. I yeah. think I pretty much decide I'm going to roll through with my Mesmer. I haven't Probably because s- it is my first character and also he's my Wait, because... From what I understand, and if I understand it right, that there is going to be like the voice, the voice of Mordermoth that only you as a Savari can hear, correct? Correct, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's what I kind of thought. Yep, that's, that's what it seems I like based on the. I read betas. that correct, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. So that should so be that interesting. Should be a little creepy. I'm actually thinking of also doing the story on my Mesmer the first time because she's my first character too, and. She's the only one I've done the full story with. I have not done it on my Necro. So hmm. that'll be interesting. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's story stuff. That's definitely something to look forward to. I think that's probably what I'm most looking forward to is the continuation yeah, yeah, story. Definitely. Uh, yeah, definitely. We're also going to be getting guild halls, of course. We've talked about that a lot the past few episodes because they've been really pumping out news on that. should be fun. There's going to be raiding, 10 people raids. Another thing people are very excited about, not me personally, I'm not big into large group content like that. Um, and of course there's going to be the fractal changes, which kind of got announced ages ago and we haven't really talked about it on this show much, but basically they're going to be splitting it up so that instead of four fractal chunks or islands as they call them per fractal run, it's just going to be the one fractal island. So they're going to be a lot shorter, there's also going to be, a, they're going to be doubling the amount of uh, difficulty levels for fractals. So I think that'll be really good for Fractals, and I definitely will try running them again once they once Heart of Thorns releases, because I if it was just the one island, I'm totally down for that. I like short little bite sized yeah. content like that. Yeah, it seems straight better because like when we did them before it was firstly it was awful. way too hard for people just starting. Yeah. Maybe we were just bad 
I don't know, but it was bad. I mean, we are... At least some of the later ones. Historically, the three of us are not great at Guild Wars 2. <laughs> but there were no ramps involved, and we still lost, so... Yeah. That's right. This is uh, true. I think both, like, as uh, you mentioned, it pretty much has a lower skill floor and a higher skill cap mm-hmm. for what you can do, so it's easier to get into, and if you want to get really good at it, you have higher you can go. Yeah, which is good. And then, obviously, they removed the randomness, too, which is a major issue for me, because it's really annoying not knowing Because we always would to. end up on that one Aether Blade one that was just wrecking us. <sighs> yeah. Those laser beam walls or whatever. Yeah, that was not fun. So hopefully fractals will be a bit better for us noobs. Maybe we'll have a reason to do something with our guild. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so that's pretty much all the Heart of Thorn stuff. I'm sure there's stuff we've missed. Um, but that's that's all the major stuff. But that's not all. Also, on the 23rd, they are going to be releasing the Halloween Festival stuff. So... Uh, they've added some stuff to the Halloween stuff. Uh, there's going to be the clockwork jumping puzzle tower thing, which is crazy difficult. And, but hopefully I'll be able to finish it this year. Um, oh, I haven't done that. Yeah, you started yeah, playing I did try after. It last year. It's pretty crazy. Um, it's it's a very intense jumping puzzle. There's they've also had to of course like redo how it appears in game. You know, obviously before they had it in Lion's Arch. Uh, they're still going to have like, the main festival area in Lion's Arch, but they've kind of, obviously, because Lion's Arch got revamped, had to redo what it looks like. They did post a couple screenshots. I think it looks really cool. Um, there's also going to be something new called Ascent to Madness, and it says, Delve into the Mad King's lair. This devilish boss encounter will bring you face-to-face with King Oswald Thorne himself for a frightful fight. Be on your guard. The diabolical monarch has deadly tricks up his sleeve. So this is like a boss fight thing that they're introducing. Pretty much, yeah. Most likely more like a world boss zig than anything else, but... Yeah, it sounds interesting. Because, um, yeah, before it was kind of mostly non-combat stuff for Halloween. So I guess this is good for people who are more interested in actually fighting. Although there is the Mad King's Realm uh, labyrinth, just like in previous years, which is this big, crazy labyrinth with various uh, monsters and stuff for you to fight and gain loot from. Uh, Halloween is always really good for getting lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of loot. So we'll that's... have to uh, live stream this stuff. Oh yeah, Let's trust me. There's going to be so much live <laughs> streaming from us once Heart of Thorns hits. Uh, I'm I've got I have plans, you guys, for Heart of Thorns. So I'm going to be streaming a lot uh, with you guys, obviously, but also when you guys aren't around because New Zealand time. And I'm I'm gonna stock up on on like caffeinated drinks and tasty snacks and it's going to be such a big Heart of Thorns gaming weekend and I'm really excited. So yeah, look forward to a whole lot of streams the next few weeks. Halloween stuff, uh, PvP stuff, maybe even like event stuff in PvE zones could be a thing we might do. Um, but yeah, so that's that's Halloween stuff. I'm, really, I'm actually really looking forward to Halloween stuff because I know... Um, something that happens with MMOs and expansions is whenever there's new content, like, everybody's Zerg rushes towards the new content, which isn't great, because sometimes, you know, there's a lot of lag, or, you know, you just can't, like, complete the content just because there's just too many people. So I think releasing Halloween at the same time is actually amazing, because then it gives you something else to go and take a break from the new content to go do the Halloween stuff. So I think that's actually really great, and I'm looking forward to the Halloween stuff. Uh, so I think that's about it for the news. Uh, one last thing that they did make a article about was the economy of Guild Wars 2. Um, MMOs are kind of interesting because they do have their own economies, and it's kind of this weird thing. If you don't play games, it's, or online games, it's kind of this weird concept that MMOs have their own little weird functioning economies. But they do, and... It takes a lot of work to kind of try and balance it between how players get gold and how they spend gold and stuff like that. So the, I guess the main economist for Guild Wars 2 um, made this post about it. And basically he talks about how they're going to be, you know, dealing with economy fluctuations in Heart of Thorns. And I'll, I'll obviously link the article in the show notes. But one thing that they, he did touch on that has kind of sent everybody into a tizzy 
is dungeon reward changes. And I'll read this out so that, you know, we get it right. So dungeon rewards. Over the last couple of years, dungeons have been a major part of the game's economy. Between unique armor and liquid rewards, liquid rewards, of course, being like gold, um, They've often, er, and they're often farmed. And the expansion will move away from this paradigm. As the game progressed, we shifted focus from dungeons to fractals and raids. And we firmly believe that fractals and raids are the content that we want to continue to support. As a part of that process, we'll shift some rewards away from dungeons and into other pieces of content. While dungeons will remain cool experiences that'll reward players with unique items, their liquid rewards will be reduced and other content will become more rewarding. And the shift in rewards... Er... Yeah, the shift in rewards is a direct representation of our focus on raids and fractals and our commitment to make them the best they can be. So basically, they're lowering the amount of straight-up gold you get from running dungeons, is what that means. And a lot of people are very, very upset about this because a lot of people just farm dungeons all day for gold. They will. That's why you see a lot of the meta Zerker build dungeon runs, because people are trying to complete dungeons as fast as they can so they can earn gold from running dungeons more and more. So a lot of people are very, very upset about this. Some people are acting like dungeons are being removed entirely from the game, which is, that paragraph is pretty clear in that that's not what is happening, because they say dungeons will remain cool experiences that will reward players with unique items. But, I mean, how do you guys feel about this change? Um, I've seen in the past where they've developers have tried to sort of encourage people to run different content than what's currently being done. Mm-hmm. Like you said, people will inevitably find the most time efficient one right. to run and they will spam the heck out of it. Mm-hmm. Because min maxing and time efficiency, I guess. This isn't really gonna solve that. It'll pretty much just mean that people will look for the newest, most efficient one and spam that instead, probably. Mm-hmm. But I'm hoping that they didn't uh, nerf the, and I guess buff the other ones, whatever else they buffed, um, the dungeons too much, that it's not even, you don't really get anything from it. Right. I'm assuming it's not the case, like they mentioned, the unique items are still there. Right. So if you want like maybe unique weapon skins or whatever that you get from those. Yeah, I get the impression that the unique stuff that they mention is is like the the armor sets that you can earn from the dungeons yeah. and the, the weapon skins as well. Yeah, so if you want those, it's still there. Yeah. I'm hoping the actual, whatever, guessing currency is maybe what's being nerfed. Um, I'm hoping those aren't reduced too much. But, mm-hmm. yeah, in the end, this is, this is not really much of anything. It's just a sideways change to make people, I say, encourage, they like to say, but it's pretty much just getting players to run some other content. Right. Yeah. It's not going to be the first time it happens either, so people should probably get used to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are also kind of upset that they said that, you know, they're not focusing on dungeons as much, which I can understand that. Um, Shifting away from focusing on dungeons is kind of disappointing. But um, hopefully, if they are focusing more on fractals in raids, that could work out. Because I feel like with fractals, because of, like, the way they are set up lore-wise, we can see and do more different things with fractals than we would be able to with dungeons, which are kind of locked into our time period. Yes, yeah, so the thing with fractals is you can go anywhere and any when. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot more possibilities you can do with that than with dungeons, which are pretty much locked to within the, like two years of where you are, yep. roughly. Yeah. So yeah, d- I'll. I guess it depends on how well the new fractal system works, whether I'll be excited for that change or not. But hopefully they do, regardless of, you know, whether the fractal system works, it would be nice for them to add more fractal islands as possibilities to play through. Um, so, yeah, that's it for the news, although there was one other thing from other sites. Um, MMORPG.com apparently had a, a ranking of uh, MMOs. And Guild Wars 2, they ranked as the number two greatest MMO of all time behind World of Warcraft, which is not that surprising. Um, do you guys agree with that? Do you think Guild Wars 2 is the second greatest MMO of all time? I feel like it's a pretty subjective thing. Yeah, I, pretty much every single top whatever number list of whatever they've named on websites is just completely subjective. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I think pretty much everyone you've seen from a site of top MMOs has World of Warcraft on the top. Right. That one's probably the only one that's not really disputable because of just how big it is. Yeah. Like, There's if you do top so MOBAs, 
League of Legends is there because it is the most played by right. a very significant margin. Mm-hmm. So unless you're trying to list it in some other way that's not um, objective, which is fine. I mean, if you're making a subjective list, then it's your opinion, which is fine. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I don't put any stock in these. Yeah. What about you, Drek? Yeah, no, I'm I'm the same way because it's like, what is your you know requirements to make your list? I mean, how are you judging the games? Because you know, how can you compare Guild Wars two to like World of Warcraft, or how can you compare World of Warcraft to you know like EverQuest? They're different. They're all you know MMORPGs, but yet they're different genres of the MMORPG in a way. And each game is different, so how can you lump them all together and say, okay, this one is the best? Well, yeah. So from what they've said on the the paragraph, it's they took into account the technical and community achievements and its wider effect on the MMO genre as a whole. So a significant impact on culture and gaming. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of these are dead and have been dead for a while. Like, I'm not convinced of that. Like, like some of these are just, I think most people even heard of. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm not really sure how they can make that claim. Well, and well, also, yeah. they got this list of MMOs from their game list on their site, MMORPG, and people can um, rate the different games. So I guess that's how they pulled up this list, and that's how they ranked them. So, you know, the, the yeah, MMOs I mean, with the highest rating. in that case, then, it's more whoever can get those plays voting, or I guess in the case of a few of these, some of the ones that are dead is more nostalgia than anything else. Yeah, because like I'm looking at the actual their game list, and I don't actually see um, the top one is Guild Wars Two. Um, that is the highest rated. I'm trying to find World of Warcraft, and I can't find it. Although, yeah, I feel like that one is just added to the top by default by everyone because of just the sheer size and uh, well, yeah, and I mean, let's just face it, it has. if if somebody talks about an MMO, the first words out of somebody's mouth is, oh, World of Warcraft. Right. Yeah. It's, it's just... the definition of yeah. MMO. Is. Yeah. When, yeah, when most people think MMOs, they think World of Warcraft. Right, exactly. It's so, you know, it's always going to be the top of these lists. You know, I don't personally play it, so I can't tell you if it deserves to be there or not. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know, I know they're making a ton of money, and it's been around forever, and they still have a ton of players, so... Maybe it deserves to be on this list, but this whole list is just weird. Yeah. Because, like, Shadowbane, that didn't even last a year. I've never even heard of it. And Vanguard's Saga of Heroes didn't last. I mean, yeah, I, I realize those are, like, way low on the list, but still, this list is just weird. Yeah. I've never even heard of Meridian 59. I don't think that I've heard of that one of the very first MMOs, actually. That was... Uh, I assume pre- that's what it's credited with then. Yeah, that was pre-Ultima Online, even. So, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, say, lists, it's, it's pretty much... Yeah, it's... Yeah. Even if you're but, to I mean, it's, it's nice to see, you know, Guild Wars 2 getting out there more. Well, I guess, you know, they don't need to get out there more because, you know, with the Heart of Thorns, it, it was everywhere, but... Right. It's I guess it's it's nice to see them getting some credit for what upgraded games it is. I'll mm-hmm. be, I guess I'll put it that way. Yeah. But yeah, this list is just a little weird. <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> the thing with these is it's not really about who is like in what position. It's more the kind of discussion that it generates. Hopefully right. more constructive discussion, not this list is crap, you're crap. <laughs> right. Because that's probably a lot of what the comment section was. I did not bother to look. Yeah, I was not even brave to look at it either, so... Yep. So, um, that's, I think, about all the news and stuff we have this week. Uh, I do just want to give a couple bits of advice for people getting ready for Heart of Thorns in the next five days. Um, get your characters to level 80 if you can, because level 80 is when you'll be able to use the elite specializations and start getting your mastery set up. So, and also, you know, the PvE content in Heart of Thorns is level 80, and that's how you'll be able to continue the story. So definitely get at least one character to level 80 if you can. Masteries are account-wide, so like I said, if you if, even if you just have one character at level 80, you'll be able to unlock mastery stuff for your whole account, so that's good. Um, park your level 80 character in the Silver Wastes, because the story starts from the Silver Wastes, so you, if, you know, if you don't want to waste time 
porting everywhere because, you know, loading screens might be long or whatever, go to Silver Wastes. Uh, and most simply, just make sure you have a lot of bag space and bank space, because I'm sure you're going to be wanting to hoard random stuff that you find in the expansion. So make sure you're, you know, you've got room for it. Yeah, and needless to say, if you have an interest in the story at all, you should probably do pretty much everything that you can. Mm -hmm. The personal story you want to wait isn't exactly connected, but there are a lot of characters that appear in that that have their black backstory sort of shown that right. appear in the living world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coming up with this too, so it's probably for the best. And the living story season one recap will tell you a good amount. Mm -hmm. The season two is there. I didn't very much enjoy the gameplay of it, but... But the, if you want to catch up on the story living yeah. world season two, if, if, it's if definitely If you're committed to knowing what's going on, you'll probably want to go do that. At the very least, I'm sure you can find a Let's Play of it online somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there are there are videos, if you uh, or maybe recaps on Wikipedia or some such. Mm -hmm. Plenty of so, ways to get knowledge up on it. Right, or, you know, even just watch those to refresh yourself if you've already done it, so you can, you know, remember who's who and what's going on and everything. Uh, you guys have any other advice for people getting ready for the expansion? Be prepared to fail, because apparently some of these mobs in the new area really hurt, I mm -hmm. guess. Yep, they are supposed Failure to be quite is difficult. exciting. So, yeah, get ready to die a lot. Don't be too worried if you do die a lot. Um... Going into this, we're pretty much all going to be noobs. Yeah, get ready to not know what's going on, because with the addition of elite specializations and all these various changes they've made, it's gonna there's going to be a bit of learning period where people don't know what's going on. Which is the best part, yeah. arguably. So make the most of it. Yeah, don't don't rush. I mean, this is me personally. I enjoy the learning period. Like that's always the most fun part of the game when you're still like, oh, everything's so cool and new and exciting. So like, if you're like that, don't try and rush and finish all the content right away. That's why I'm gonna be doing the Halloween stuff inter like you know interspersed with it. So I'm not like rushing through the new content. I'm not gonna you know try and look up guides to finish everything really quickly. I'm just gonna you know enjoy it because that's kind of the point. Um, I think that's about it, uh, since this is the last episode before Heart of Thorns releases, I think that's about it. Anything else? Mm, don't think so. Alright, well, I guess we will see you next weekend, and we next weekend we will be in the Heart of Thorns, and so we'll talk about that quite a bit, I'm sure. If you want more Radio Freeteria, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and over at RadioFreeteria.net, you'll find our RSS feed. Don't miss out on our live streams. Every Saturday at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we record Radio Freeteria live at twitch.tv slash Radio Freeteria. We also stream Guild Wars 2 gameplay on and off throughout the week. If you want more news from us, you can find Radio Freeteria on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and Tumblr. And, of course, for more information about us and our show, you can always check out RadioFreeteria.net.